What happens is we become different in the sense that we are no longer following simply our earthly desires and being in the sense realm all the time. Something changes within us when we really appreciate who Jesus is and we really understand what he's done for us. There is a love that comes for Jesus that defies knowledge. It defies understanding. You know, Paul says there are two laws at work in me that wage against each other. There is the law of sin and death and then there is the law of love through Christ Jesus. And they're at war. And so suddenly I become a Christian and I have a tension that goes on inside of me. One side of me still has the animalistic lusts and desires that I had from, from birth. But something else has happened in me that is calling me to transcend myself. Deep is calling to deep. And there is a, a desire in me that wants to, to be reconciled, to be at peace with the Father. And I find that through Christ. I find that in the love of Christ. When I see what Jesus did for me on the cross, suddenly it melts my heart, but it calls me. It calls me in my deep inner self, my inner being. It strengthens me in there to try to attain something more. It calls me to a different position. And I have the assurances that when I respond to that call and take myself out of the mire and put myself firmly on the rock of Christ, that something changes in me, that my heart no longer wants to just be an animal, to be animalistic. It wants to be something more. I want to be a human being. And so... Paul sees this here and he says that you being rooted and grounded in love. So if everything that you do from now on is rooted and grounded in the love of Christ, in the understanding that you have of love through Christ, which, which doesn't go with the world's knowledge. It doesn't sit with the world's knowledge. The world doesn't understand how you can really love Jesus Christ. The world doesn't understand how you can love a God you can't see. The world doesn't understand when you talk about the love of Christ and the fact that you have the, the Spirit of Christ, that Jesus loved you so much that he sent you a Holy Spirit to be with you. They don't understand that because that passes the knowledge. How can you, as a sinner as someone who's a murderer, or an adulterer, or a thief. How can you be loved by God? Pass his knowledge. How can I, a mere sinner, be loved by a holy God? It passes knowledge. It passes the understanding. Because you, you know in this world that you don't get anything for nothing. <laughs> you know... And so it's very difficult to accept the free gift of love of the Lord Jesus Christ, isn't it? It's hard to swallow that pill. It's the medicine we all need, you know, but, but can we swallow that? It's really difficult because we can't earn it. We can't pay for it. We can't have the status to get us there. There's nothing we can do to gain our salvation. There's nothing we can do to make peace with God because God is holy and we are sinners. So how can we get to that peace with the holy God? That's where we need the bridge of the Lord Jesus Christ and him manifesting as God in the flesh. And that's what happens. He comes to us as a saviour and his love for us passes knowledge. That while we were still saying, God, we're not interested. While we were still saying, I don't need God. While we're saying, I'll run my own life the way I want to. I don't need any, any saviour or anything like that. What do I need that for? My life is fine. 
while we were even in the point of saying, I reject God, I reject Jesus, what on earth is all that rubbish about religion? I don't want any of that stuff. Even when we were in a position of, of talking against Christians, of talking against the church, of talking against Jesus Christ, perhaps even hating God, God, in the Lord Jesus Christ, still loved us. That passes knowledge. That we find difficult to fathom out. That our brains can't get through. But we can only say thank you to God. We can only say to God, that love is just amazing. That love isn't love that I see in the world today. When I do something wrong, nobody comes to save me. That kind of love is way beyond what we understand as love is today. We see love as sex. We see love as manipulation. We see love as <clears throat> kindnesses. And often they have an agenda. But this love had no agenda. This love was free, unconditional, unmerited. We didn't deserve it. God loves us anyway. We see a little bit of that where we, where we love our children. And even though they do wrong, we still love them. And God sees us as little children in that sense. But that knowledge of understanding that love is still surpassed. We can't really get our heads around it. Not completely. Not as adults. Makes it very difficult. Children can get that much easier than we can. And Jesus even said, unless you can come to me as little children, <laughs> you're not going to make it. Unless you can come without your agendas, you're not going to make it. But he goes on to say, to know the love of Christ which passes knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. And to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly, above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works in us, to him be glory in the church by Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. He's saying that we cannot even imagine all that God can give us. We can't even imagine the love that God can pour out on us. Because it's exceedingly above, abundantly above all that we ask or think. This is our God. This is a God who really has got our backs. <laughs> he has the resources, not just in the sense realm. He has the resources in the spiritual realm. He has the resources in the realm of love, which doesn't necessarily make sense to our senses. That's the problem. He loves us completely. And then we come to the gospel Finally, the Gospel of the Lord Jesus here in John's Gospel, chapter 2, verses 1 to 21. And we see here a picture of Jesus caring for the people. This is, this is God in the flesh. This is the Father in the flesh showing that he wants to care for his children. 5,000 men sat down on the mountain that day and all they had all they had, Peter, Simon Peter's brother said to him, there is a lad here who has five barley loaves and two small fish, but what are they among so many? And here we see the caring nature of God. God shows us how much he cares about us and how much all the resources of, of the heaven are in his hands. That he took five loaves and two small fish and he fed 5,000 men. 